Good afternoon, folks. This is George Carlson, Engineering Manager at Simutec Group. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can simulate a rear impact guard crush test on a semi-trailer in ANSYS Mechanical. In the picture in the top left, we see an automobile that has impacted the rear of a semi-truck trailer. You can see that the bumper shown here, if you can follow my cursor, has essentially been crushed or destroyed. Now, obviously, the intent of the bumpers on these semi-trailers is to minimize injury to those in the passenger car in the impact event. There are standards in the industry in both the United States and Canada for the amount of energy that the bumper must absorb in a static bench test. A chart from this is shown here on the right. On the horizontal axis, we show deformation of the bumper at a load applicator point in millimeters. And then also on the vertical axis, we show force in kilonewtons in this case. So the area under this curve is effectively the energy absorbed by the bumper when it's deflected. This is an expensive physical test to run in a lab, and it can be simulated much more cost-effectively in ANSYS Mechanical. So in this slide, we see the results from our ANSYS Mechanical simulation. This is showing equivalent plastic strain for the bumper components. You can watch the animation shown here, and we see that the verticals on the bumper tend to buckle as it's deflected with our load applicator here at the left. So the next question that we want to answer is how much energy is absorbed in this test. And here we have a chart, again, similar to the one that I showed previously, showing force on the vertical axis and deflection on the horizontal axis. In this case, we're looking at deflection in inches and force in pounds force. So our energy absorbed, or the area under this blue curve, is essentially about 7,600 foot-pounds, or about 10,300 joules. So we've effectively solved the problem in ANSYS Mechanical, much faster and much less expensive than running the physical test. Thus, you could potentially use the ANSYS Mechanical simulation to eliminate multiple iterations of bench testing, saving thousands of dollars. So what does the workflow look like in ANSYS? We would start out in our Workbench Project Schematic page. Here we would connect a series of different analysis environments, controlling the flow of information into and out of one system and into another. So initially we would set up a geometry system for our cleanup and simplification of our geometry. This would be done in SpaceClaim Direct Modeler. Here we would do things like simplification of geometry and removal of unneeded features for the simulation. Once the geometry was prepped, it would be passed to ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. Here we would do things like assignment of materials, connectivity, meaning contacts, joints, that sort of thing, specification and generation of the mesh, application of loads and boundary conditions, solution, and finally post-processing. Next, we'll show you a live demonstration just very quickly of the workflow and the process. This is the ANSYS Workbench Project Schematic page. Here in the Project Schematic area of the screen, we'll set up the basic workflow for our simulations. We'll do this by taking systems either out of our Analysis Systems Toolbox or the Component Systems Toolbox. We'll first start by placing a geometry system in the schematic. This is where we'll assign our starting CAD geometry. We use this model semi-trailer starting document for that. Next, we'll take an analysis system. In this case, we're going to do a static structural analysis and place it on top of the geometry cell. That will create a static structural system within the schematic. And you see we've got multiple cells, including engineering data, geometry, model, etc. So the geometry will feed from the CAD model into the geometry cell of the static structural. Next, we may want to do some further downstream analyses, so we'll take and drag and drop a modal system onto the model cell of the static structural. You see we've got these connector pipes here connecting the different analysis systems. So between the static structural and the modal, we're sharing engineering data, which is material properties, geometry, which is essentially the CAD model, 
and the model cells, which is essentially the finite element model, which is the mesh, any connections, material specifications, etc. So at this point, we'll go ahead and edit our starting geometry in space claim and show you the workflow for the geometry prep portion of the simulation. Now we've got our starting CAD geometry open in ANSYS space claim. This is where we'll simplify and clean up the model such that it'll be more suitable for analysis in ANSYS mechanical. We can see we got a pretty much a full complete assembly of our trailer here and we won't need a lot of these parts so we have them what is called suppressed for physics at this point and we can quickly hide those bodies just by saying hide all suppressed. So the next thing I want to do is just quickly show you a couple of common operations that we would do in space claim as far as cleanup. So the first thing I'm going to do is some mid-surfacing. Essentially we want to mid-surface all of the parts of the trailer frame itself. So we're going to go to our prepare tool here and select mid-surface and we're going to use a range of thicknesses, in this case 0 to 1, and we're going to make sure we have checked off to extend surfaces. So that would extend the surfaces to account for the loss of the thickness of the materials upon mid-surfacing. So then we're just going to select essentially all the bodies here and space claim will find mating surfaces on the opposite sides of the parts and we'll go ahead and complete the mid-surface operation. So our mid-surface operation is completed. If you look over here at our outline structure you see that we have a number of mid-surface bodies that are displayed on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and select those and move them to a new component or sub-assembly. So we can call that frame surfaces. Now we'll take a look at the properties of that sub-assembly. Share topology, which means edges that lie on common faces um, would be shared in mechanical as far as connecting the mesh. That's set to none presently. We'll set that to share and go back to our tree structure. So what that's going to give us in mechanical, um, the topology will be shared and those edges will be connected at common nodes so we won't have to put contact at every interface between parts in the frame assembly once we're in mechanical. So now we're going to check and see if all of our faces in the model were extended correctly. And you can see there's some here lighting up in red that weren't properly extended. If we just go ahead and click on them, they'll be extended now. So you can see very quickly that we were able to mid-surface a set of about 20 parts within a minute or so's time. Next, we want to split the trailer frame off at about 104 inches from the rear end, because that's just the portion of it that we'll use for the bench test that we're going to simulate in mechanical. To do that, we're going to go back to our design tab and use a split body operation. We'll just use a box select to select the bodies that we want to split. And then we've got a plane here that we're going to use for the splitting. So the axial frame members, the rails have been split. Next, we're going to just go ahead and suppress the bodies forward of the part that we want to use. And again, we'll hide all suppressed bodies. So very quickly, we've got the portion of the frame we want to use mid-surfaced and split off here in space claim. Next, we want to generate a mid-surface for our bumper member itself. So we'll go to our prepare tool, select the mid-surface tool, and set an appropriate range for the thickness of the bumper. Our mid-surfacing operation is completed. Our next step is going to be to imprint some washer faces here on the holes in the bumper. We'll use those in mechanical for beam connections to attach the bumper to the vertical gussets on the bumper assembly. So we'll use our pull tool for that. And some nice selection functionality here. Once we've selected one of those holes, we can select edges with the same length and it'll grab all four of them. We're going to copy the edge on the surface there, zoom in a little bit, and our pull will be an addition of about 0.279 to the radius of the holes there. So if we zoom out, we see we've got nice four nice washer faces imprinted on our bumper surface, which is what we so the last thing I'm going to show here in space claim, we need to create a solid body for our load applicator plate. In other words, the part that's going to push up against the bumper in our bench test simulation. So we'll go to our sketch tool for that. 
We use our rectangle tool to create the sketch for that plate. Then it's going to be ten and a half inches high by eight inches wide. And then we'll use our pool tool. It'll have a thickness of one inch. Next, we're going to use our pool tool to put a quarter inch radius on the edges that will made up against the bumper. So we've got our load applicator plate geometry completed. And essentially, we've got our model prepped, and we're ready to go into mechanical to do the finite element model preparation and solution. Here we have our fully prepped geometry open in the ANSYS mechanical interface. The mechanical interface is based on what we call an outline tree structure. So it starts out at the top level with the model branch, and underneath that is geometry. And this is essentially a list of all your bodies within the model. And here we can also specify and apply materials to a given body. As we see here, this particular part has been assigned this low alloy steel grade 50. Next is the materials branch of the outline. Here we can review all of the defined material properties. You can define properties as basic as isotropic linear elasticity and get as complex as uh, plasticity models such as this multilinear isotropic hardening model. Uh, you can also define such things as hyperelasticity, viscoelasticity, and creep. So you can get very complex with your material models. Next is the connections branch, and this is where we essentially define contact, joints, beam connections, essentially which defined how the various parts are connected and transfer loads to other parts within the model. Next is the mesh branch. Here is how we control the sizing and the methods of generating the mesh. Next is the environment branch, in this case a static structural branch. Here we would apply loads and boundary conditions and also apply solution controls. Finally is the solution branch, and this is where we would add things like contour plots and other results items and basically do the post-processing of the model. So now we'll talk quickly about the setup, solution, and results for our bumper assembly model. And this is a really cool model for an implicit solver like ANSYS Mechanical because it's got a lot of nonlinearities going on. We previously talked about the material nonlinearities, in other words, the plasticity that's been defined for the bumper assembly components. It's also got frictional contact between the bumper components. You can see here the gusset members have frictional contact defined. There's also frictional contact between the bumper bar and the gussets themselves, as well as between our load applicator plate and our bumper. Moving on, we'll take a quick look at the mesh. So if we look at the statistics of the mesh, this particular model is about 220,000 nodes, about 159,000 elements. If we zoom in on our mesh in the region of the vertical gusset members, you'll note that we've got an all hex mesh on these parts and there's three elements through the thickness in all of them. This should give us very good resolution of the results in these members. Next, we talk about the loading in our model. So if we zoom in on the graphics window here, we see we've got some bolt pretension loads. Those are the red arrows. There's two fasteners here on each gusset and then two fasteners fastening the bumper bar to the gussets themselves. Those are all pretensioned. In the case of the upper bolts, it's 15,000 pounds. And in the case of the bumper to gussets, it's 10,000 pounds. We've also constrained the front of the frame rails in the axial or Z direction. We've then got edge constraints on the leaf spring mount plates on the bottom of the frame of the trailer. Next, we have these applicator plates, which in the bench test would be connected to a jack screw or a hydraulic ram that are forcing the frame against the bench. And then finally, we have our load applicator plate, which is displaced five inches in the axial direction as the spec applies. Next, we discuss the results. Here, we're looking at deflection in the axial direction upon application of the five inch displacement to the applicator plate. We can animate this result. You can see the applicator plate pushing the bumper forward here. We can spin the model live while it's animating, and you can get a better idea of exactly how the gussets are buckling as shown here. 
We can also plot quantities such as equivalent stress, as shown here for the gusset members. We see our max is about 92,000 psi. We can also plot equivalent plastic strain, and we've accumulated about 53% max in our gusset member. We can also review contact pressure, which is essentially characterizing the forces between the contacting members for our various contacts within the model. Ultimately, we wanted to look at a force versus deflection curve based on our load applicator plate deflecting the bumper five inches. Here's our force reaction curve. Here's our applicator plate displacement curve. And we can also create a chart that shows force versus displacement. We've stretched our graph window out, and now the chart looks very similar to the one we showed previously in Excel. Now that we've shown you the process for simulating the bumper crush bench test in ANSYS, you'll want to consider the return on investment for owning a tool like ANSYS Mechanical. Now, certainly a trailer manufacturing company could quantify the cost of a physical bench test, and an engineer might typically spend about 50 hours setting up and solving a simulation such as this. Additional areas for consideration are engineering time, manufacturing costs to develop a physical test model, tooling costs for that same physical test, warranty costs, reduced expenses from legal issues associated with a rear impact crash of one of your trailers. Certainly with a tool like ANSYS, you'll be more innovative in your designs and they'll be much more optimized prior to going to bench testing. And certainly working with your client base, having a tool like ANSYS being used in your designs puts you in a much better light with your potential customers. So to summarize, we've shown you that we can successfully simulate the static bench test in ANSYS Mechanical. Although this was a contrived model sourced from grabcad.com, we have worked with actual trailer manufacturers in the past. In our energy absorption data from ANSYS simulations, we've been told closely matches their bench test data. Certainly the simulation process in ANSYS is much faster and less costly than the physical test. So what does this mean? Certainly quicker time to market, less bench tests, and finally, much less money buried in broken parts. Thank <laughs> you.